Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we are going to be talking about graded bullion as a way to invest in silver. So it's something that I own a small amount of, and I think that it's a really important topic to touch on. Anybody who has graded bullion is thinking of purchasing some, getting into silver, um, or, you know, this is often a step people will take after they've invested in silver and they're already familiar with stacking. Probably want to watch this video because I'm going to give my opinions on graded bullion if it's something you should be stacking or not. And I like to be, um, you know, if you don't want to stick around for the whole video, my advice would be avoid unless you really have a smart plan. And we're going to be explaining the pros and cons of graded silver um, and maybe walk you through why I'm arriving at that final um, kind of recommendation of generally staying away from this material. But I will, you know, I'll admit um, often they can be some really nice looking coins, you know, certainly um, very cool, these nice looking labels, and that kind of all factors into how graded bullion is bought and sold. Um, so without further ado, let's go to the intro and then get started. So, like I said, we'll start with the pros, and I think the very first thing is going to be that these are attractive coins, especially with the label. You know, I think that the label um, on a lot of these coins complements the Silver Eagle quite nicely. So, for example, uh, in this case, it's got some nice holographic strip by NGC. Uh, you know, the Eagle, you know, kind of attractive, evokes the, uh, you know, it is a Silver Eagle after all. And it's certainly in good shape, you know, often the coins that are getting graded are going to be quite attractive. Um, you know, they're they're super clean, not very many hits on them. You know, you can see maybe a little bit of wear in, in some very small um, portions here. But generally, you know, Silver Eagles, you're not going to see like a Mint State 66 Silver Eagle get graded, except when it's like a super toner. There are some olded, oh, older, excuse me, um, PCI holdered. American Silver Eagles that have toned beautifully, and this video is not going to be covering the toned Silver Eagles. So that's just something very important to talk about that's not going to be uh, covered within this video. That would be something uh, separate. And they also often can be kind of interesting in terms of having some specificity. So I, I don't think that you could tell that this was really a San Francisco mint. You know, it's not like they're putting S mint marks on these um, bullion coins, but here, you know, we know that this came from the San Francisco mint. They graded probably all of the coins in this monster box. Um, it's one of the first releases, which, what does that mean? It means basically that whoever was grading it paid a little bit of money extra for that first release designation. It's from the mint sealed box number 16. I mean, adds a little bit of, you know, maybe you want to put together all the coins from box 16, but uh, I'm telling you, that's really not uh, very good reasons. I think that the number of pros on this stuff is going to run out pretty quickly. And I think already, I mean, this, it's a big marketing gimmick um, to be having this graded silver bullion. And that's really why I'm making this video. Um, it's, it's something that I am always telling people to stay away from. Um, and obviously, I own a few coins. Literally, I bought the coins here because I wanted to make a video on it and, um, you know, that I've got them here and, and I feel like I paid a price that was at a pretty good discount because I bought it from a coin shop that had paid very little for these coins and they just wanted to get them out of their door, didn't feel like listing them on eBay. So here we are, I have it. Um, but to go over that, uh, you know, the, the pros, they're attractive um, and that's mainly, you know, it can be kind of cool in terms of the presentation. Uh, maybe if you're giving a one-off gift, it's not a bad idea. Uh, because it's a little more memorable than giving something in like a coin flip that's a lot easier to lose. Um, there is a chance that some of this stuff appreciates and, you know, it, you can buy it and then sell it to another collector. That's certainly something that can happen, but I feel like we're in a world where everybody's looking for the next thing that's going to skyrocket in price, and there's a lot of things that have rarity ascribed to them that are not really specifically that rare. I think, you know, if we go back here, this coin was graded, and it says first year of issue. So that's kind of also, you know, gorgeous coin. Really like this coin. I think it's great. I think the holder complements it well, but you can even see right on the label, you know, first year of issue, trying to market that as the first time they were making these koalas. And I don't think that this sort, these coins, they're not super scarce. It's not like, you know, and, and maybe there are technically more 09 SVDBs that have survived 
or you know more of some key date coin or some you know coin from the 1800s uh, silver coin but i think that collecting really rare items is the way to go if you're going to be paying large premiums and that's what you get here on ebay these sort of things might be selling for like 50 bucks um, and at current silver prices that's almost double and if it said mint state 70 on it it might sell for you know four times the silver price so it's really not much of a silver investment you know obviously you have some some uh, limited downside relative to like a copper coin or something like that uh, if numismatics gets crushed and the silver value uh, you know hangs around this this you know might be reasonable but I think when you invest in silver you really want to look at you know these a bunch of these coins not in the in the uh, graded bullion case and with premiums on these maybe even look to some non-silver eagle or non-government one ounce rounds um, but so so that's the basic thing uh, they could there is a possibility for appreciation and the big thing that I would also recommend is that you want to sell these the right way which is going to look like taking good images of it and putting it on eBay uh, or selling to a, a collector uh, a big negative on these is often people get into some sort of marketing scheme and then they sell to a coin shop and they get crushed on their value because they were paying for the plastic and paying for the label and not paying for the coin and that's one of the oldest lessons in the game ever since graded coins have been around you're not paying you want to pay for what's inside the holder not what's on the holder because sometimes grading companies make mistakes i have a lot of confidence in grading companies but i mean especially on the new stuff mint state 69 and mint state 70 there's almost no difference it's almost like they have to fill a certain quota of giving 70s and giving 69s it makes a market um, for the collectors and they're able to you know give people uh, you know because a lot of these are 70 i mean you could probably uh, take a really small magnifier and miss a tiny mark or, uh, you know, see the tiny mark. And I'm not saying that the grading companies are doing a disservice, but they also need to make sure that the people who are paying them for these bulk submissions continue to do so because that's how they, uh, you know, they can, they can be profitable from that. And that's not like exposing them or anything. That's just kind of talking about the business model. It's something that they need to do. They come up with interesting labels and, you know, that, so that's kind of, been a strategy that's worked for a long time for for the grading companies but uh what when it, it's a shame is often people who don't know a ton about bullion they assume something like this you know looks kind of rare again it says early releases that that it, it's unfortunate it really doesn't mean anything it's certainly not adding to the silver value which is how i think you should be buying graded bullion um so there's sky high premiums less silver i mean you, again you could probably get double the silver if you just bought the silver not much of a difference between mint state 69 and 70. They're also limited in terms of their collectability. Not a lot of people, you know, maybe somebody's doing a date run, but nobody's doing a, you know, collecting one coin from each of the mint sealed boxes, or I've never heard of somebody looking for first releases and then non first releases. So it's not very much of a collectible item, very much so a marketing gimmick there. Um, you, it's challenging to sell it to shops and it's not particularly rare. Now I'm being very negative, but that's only because um, I'm doing this as, you know, kind of a thinking how to be smart when you're getting into coins, not necessarily investment advice, but there are many other ways of being smart about buying either rare coins or rare or, or silver in volume. Or you can go into this and continue to collect or start buying graded bullion, but just be aware of the risks and be very aware that I, I feel strongly that you should be comfortable with selling these on your own, not to a coin shop, because that's where you're really going to get, um, you know, it's going to be challenging for you to navigate that process. I, I have seen very few people do well with it. Um, this also is not a comment. I know that there's some very rare, like Mint State 70 proofs from the early years that these were being made. Personally, I'm, I would avoid that sort of thing, but that's not a, not a aspect of the market that I have exposure to. I'm talking about you know, graded coins that are like 200 bucks and, and below. I just feel strongly that for somebody, especially who's just getting in as a beginner's guide, I really can't strongly recommend this stuff for people to get into, get comfortable with investing in silver in other ways physically first. Um, and then maybe over time, if you want to pick up a few to gift or just because you like how the, uh, the graded cases look, it's not like a terrible thing. I mean, again, if you spend 50 bucks on this, 
you might lose 20 or 15 bucks or something when you turn it around it's not like a you know your life is over a moment it's just a small loss but i figure it's a lot more fun when you can make silver investments that may have a better chance i would say of i mean when you get back down to it just owning more silver in person thanks for watching the video i'd encourage you to like comment and definitely subscribe to the channel and connect with me on facebook instagram and twitter i also have a website treasuretownyt.com where you should go so that you can learn more about coins as well as what's happening on the channel and possibly find a place to sell your coins and collectibles. I also want to talk about some of my other projects like coinmeltprice.com, which shows precious metals prices as well as the melt values of coins containing those precious metals, both US and world. I also have coinsmetalscards.com, which will develop into a full marketplace as well as a new source for coins, metals, cards, as the name might suggest and then treasuretowncoins.com, which long-term will be my coin-dealing entity separate from the channel, and lastly, whatsthegrade.com, which will be a stickering service for already certified collectibles where you can get a approval or verification of the grade on the holder. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos.